a year ago at this time, uh, the team had had perhaps its worst season, or certainly the worst since uh, you've taken over ownership. A year later, so much has changed. Looking from afar where you are, what do you put it down to? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the obvious first difference is the fact that we've had a normal season. Um, you know, I, 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 I feel like we've belabored the COVID thing enough, but there's no way that anyone from the outside could ever truly understand what it means to a professional sports team to be completely out of their market, to be away from their family, to live in an apartment, to be away from home, to have zero home games. Um, I think just even recently in our five-game win streak to finish the season, we saw the support at Spark Arena. Um, that means a lot. So having our fans back, having the support of New Zealanders, I think that's the biggest difference. And then two, I think what – uh, you know, Modi and the rest of our staff focused on this off this past off season was building a team that got back to our kind of core values, playing defense, playing hard nose, being team, you know, team oriented and um, kind of rebuilding what it means to be a breaker after two really tough seasons. Um, I think that's the biggest difference. And I think one thing that gets, <laughs> that gets lost is our second year of ownership uh, when we had Scotty Hobson. You know, we went 11 and three to finish the season. We missed out on the playoffs by a tiebreaker on the last day of the regular season, and then COVID hit. So I think this is kind of just returning to that momentum that we had. And you know, at the end of the day, the players and the staff and what they do—they're um, the ones who carry this thing. You know, and, and they've had a phenomenal year. Matt, talk to us about Modi. Why him? Why did you decide to get him? It was pretty easy. You know, Modi came in uh, our second year of ownership when one of our assistants left during an NBA on, during the NBA tour. We needed a coach. Dan Shamir um, said, look, I've got this guy. I trust him. He's a partner. He works his ass off. This is who we need to get. We went out and got him. And he came in and he was amazing as an assistant coach. The players loved him. He put in the work. He really knows basketball. Some of my favorite times were sitting with Dan and Modi just talking hoops. Um, so when Dan decided that what was best for him and his family was to return to Europe, it was the easiest decision. You know, we did not, I did not consider one other coach. It was Modi the entire time. I kind of suspected that there would be, um, oh, excuse me, that's my alarm. I suspected that there could possibly be some more growing pains than there were, but he stepped right in. The players trust him. The players love him. And I think anyone that's gotten a chance to speak with him media wise or spend any time with him, you see genu you know, Modi is, uh, really genuine, puts in the work, and he's found a way to get the most out of these players. So it's been a lot of fun to watch. And how much of a difference has he made? It's huge. You know, he was a big part of our recruitment. Um, he had a very clear vision for what kind of team he wanted to coach and build. And from day one, he made it very clear with the help of our captain, Tom Abercrombie, and some of the guys who've been here, what the expectations were, what it means to be a breaker, what we're building what that foundation means. And um, I don't think you could overstate how important Modi has been. I think it all starts with him. And um, I think the team has taken on his attitude and approach. And, you know, we, we make no excuses. We go out and the team has answered the bell the entire season. And that's why I feel pretty good about Sunday at Spark Arena. I think, uh, I think they'll come out, the team will come out ready. Matt Walsh, owner, CEO of the Breakers. With, with all due respect, I mean, in this situation with the team flying high like this, I mean, you'd expect nothing but to see the owner oh, absolutely everywhere. You've you've been absent this year. Why is that? Yeah, you know, I've had to. Um, well, first, I, you know, I was with the team last year in Australia, and I got locked out of the country. So me and my family met back here in the states, and then unfortunately, um, some health issues and some personal reasons uh, amongst my family and my wife's have caused us to. Um, relocate here back in the States. I was over in January for a few weeks and I'll certainly be over for the grand finals, but um, well, you know, let's, just, hey, let's just not preempt pre that just in case I get really I get all superstitious about this. If we make the grand final, which please. no, 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 if we make it, oh, yeah. no, no, trust yeah. me, I, have, I haven't even I haven't even begun to allow myself to feel what, or think about what it'll feel like to make it. But if we make it, I'll be over for the grand final. Um, and you know, I'm still involved day to day with uh, the club and um, it's just like I said you know sometimes life gets in the way and I've had to uh, be uh, spend most of my time in the states this year can you come back here are you going to bring the family back here is that is that a, a possibility yeah for sure I mean my family we spent four years in New Zealand um, 
my kids still call New Zealand home. Uh, you know, we're renting here in the States and um, we, we've made the most of it, but New Zealand's our home. We're in the process of finalizing our permanent residency and um, we look forward to being back, um, you know, without getting into too much detail. Like I said, you know, we've just had some personal circumstances um, with my family and my wife that have caused us to be here and hopefully those get resolved and we can kind of get back to what we would consider normal. All right, then, one all the split. Now, we had Liam Santa Maria on the show yesterday from NFL Overtime. He actually picked that. He said a really difficult place to go that they'll get up for this game. That you know, and, and But whether they can actually then return to Spark Arena and play like that again, uh, I think pointers would suggest now break his home court advantage and so forth. Is that how it's going to play out, Matt? I think so. I mean, this is what you work the entire season for. This is why we uh, were so excited and thrilled when we got the, the number two seed. It means we didn't have to play the play-in game, and it meant that if things come down to it, we get a home do-or-die playoff game. What else you know, could you ask for? Tasmania is a very tough team. They certainly last night played like their season depended on it. Um, we went a little bit cold in the second half. You know, we were outshot from the free throw line, 14-3, to three, a little bit of a foul discrepancy. Um, so hopefully things return to normal at home. Um, I'm sure we're going to have an amazing crowd. The Breakers fans have been turning out in droves, and um, I feel pretty good. Like, like I said, can't ask for anything more. You have a home game in front of our crowd to make it to the grand final. Uh, that's what you work for. That's what, as players, that's what, that's what you dream of.